the past seven years at ESPN have been a particular privilege. I'm appreciative of the company's leadership, especially Jimmy Patero and Christian Douglas for the understanding and acceptance of my decision to make a life change. After all these years reporting on everyone's team, I'm heading back to my own. Those were Adrian Wojnarowski's comments. And at the time, people were sending us the story, Rhodes retired, Ward retired, what do you think about it, blah, 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 blah. And at the time, I was like, well, yeah, he retired. I'm not really sure, you know, how much of a story there is to that apart from just reporting on the story. But then as time went on, I thought back to an interview I saw about a month or two ago of Chris Broussard on a show called The House of Straws, where he was essentially talking about the time he was essentially approached by ESPN to take on this Adrian Wojnarowski kind of role. And he was talking about, you know, the time he was helped breaking the story of LeBron James going to the Miami Heat. And after he went through that, you know, he just made a decision at that time where he said, this type of job is just is just way too stressful uh, for me. And there's no way I would want to continue doing this. And I was like, wow. You know, I think back to what Chris said, and then you now see Adrian Wojnarowski just abruptly retiring. I was like, wow, he, he must have been onto something. So these are the comments that we want to get into. But before we even get into what Chris Broussard had to say, today's video is brought to you by our sponsor, Prize Picks, which is a large daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Price Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Price Picks makes it easy to get real money action on sports and players you love. Pick more or less on two or more players in any sport to win up to 100 times your entry fee. For example, here's a possible winning player projection lineup. Tyreek Hill for more than 90 receiving yards and Dak Prescott for more than 263 passing yards. Josh Allen for less than 240 passing yards and CB Lamb for more than 96 receiving yards. And if you're like me and you want to play safe, you will love the new features Prize Picks invented. Flex plays. Flex pays are the safest way to play prize picks. You can still make a profit or win some money back, even if a couple of your picks don't hit. On top of this, prize picks puts their members first. So all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When my picks hit, I can get my money in as quick as 15 minutes. So download the prize picks app today and use code CLNS to get $50 instantly when you play $5. That's code CLNS on prize picks to get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. And remember, whenever you support this sponsor, you're supporting this channel. Thank you. So what we wanna do now, I wanna play exactly what Chris Broussard had to say on the House of Straws, and then wanna come back and continue on with the show. Take a listen to Chris Broussard here. What was the decision like for you? Because we've never had that conversation. I'm I'm curious because I have this recollection that you were far out ahead of that reporting that LeBron was going to Miami. And from my recollection, there was just so much pressure on that and what it was going to be. And I think, I mean, were you part, I mean, this is poor research done by me. You might've even been part of the decision special. Do, do I have that right? Um, I, yes. I was not, I was not part of their special, but mm. as you know, like you said, I was doing around the clock reporting on that. Yeah. And so that was, that was a great time to be honest. I, I, re, I think back with fondness to that time. So it was 2010, of course. And as you know, that was the story of, the decade or at that even the century at yeah. that point because it was early in the 2000s <laughs> and since then almost every summer has had you know big time free agents that everybody followed but at that point this was it wasn't a first but yeah. the magnitude of it had not been seen before and so my thinking was man this is really a chance to separate myself and so I was working around the clock for those three weeks or so. Uh, I was just working around the clock. And, and it even got to the point where ESPN, because I was getting good information, was having me on almost all day. Like I would go in. There were days, many days where I would go in to be on Mike and Mike in the morning in the six o'clock a.m. hour. And I would be at the studio in Bristol until like midnight. 
you know, because they will want me on the evening sports center and then the, the afternoon sports center and, and ESPN news and all of that. And so that really did help my career as well, because I was getting a lot of news. And then they put me on the NBA countdown show with Magic Johnson, uh, John Barry and Michael Wilbon. And that was big. We, we were out in L.A. Uh, so that did help my career a lot. Now, the interesting thing is I once I did, you know, well covering that story, I felt like it wasn't spoken, but I felt like ESPN started looking at me like, oh, this guy is going to be our Adam Schefter of the mm. NBA. And I never wanted to be that. You no. know, I, I worked around the clock for those three weeks, but I didn't want to work around the clock for 350 days a year. Yeah. Real yeah. talk. And so they kind of viewed me in that role. I never said anything like, hey, I don't want to do that. So I just kind of let it flow. And then, you know, they started looking at me to break all these stories. And I, I really wasn't to be I was working and I was putting in my work, but I wasn't working like a Woj or a Shams around the yeah. clock all day, every day. And I subsequently I wasn't breaking news like they were. Yeah, I mean, that lifestyle is impossible. Oh. And I remember what the ESPN news desk was like, Chris, and I wasn't even a newsbreaker, but if there was some news from a practice with the Warriors, they were angry at me that I didn't do what they wanted to do. Right. And it's a pressure. I mean, there's a Washington Post article from about two years ago on Schefter and how he lives his life. And yeah, he gets paid $9 million a year, but I came away from it going, that is not worth it. That's not worth it. People might think it's worth it. I mean, there are probably people listening who have a job that they absolutely hate who go, yeah, I would want to be on TV and famous and breaking stories. But when you actually read about Schefter's life, that's a mental prison, man. He is in a state of forever vigilance and fear and consumption. So you heard what Chris Broussard had to say, right? You even heard uh, what the gentleman who's interviewing him said as well about, you know, you're getting paid nine million a year and all of this. And people are like, I'll do a job for nine million. But he's like, you don't understand just how taxing it is. It's it's very taxing, right? It's very these kind of and I've never done it at that level, but it's very, very taxing because you're 100 percent dialed in. And I don't think it's just news. I think it's I mean, as sports, I think it's news in general. You're always locked in. So even when you're not producing content. Or even when you're not searching about content, you're constantly thinking about content, right? You're constantly thinking about it. So your mind bar is barely at rest.